Good evening everyone, it's Paulie. I hope you're all well. I've started the pre-recording of the live stream a little bit early so I can just do this introduction and explain to you what's happening first. This evening I'm doing the first part in a three-part series of how did Paulie get into WA. I'm not originally from Western Australia and tonight I'd like to explain to uh, everyone sort of a bit of my backstory and how I got here. So I'll be showing you some images and uh, hopefully if I've uh, met you along my journey, you'll comment below and uh, if you can remember a memorable moment or uh, some mischief or something we got up to, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, once again, I'd like to wish you all well. So uh, first off, I was born in Bathurst and that's in New South Wales. It's about two and a half hours, 250 k's inland from Sydney over the Blue Mountains. Uh, for history buffs out there, it was the first inland town that uh, the, uh, the colonists, um, the British, uh, are settled. And uh, I was born in 1981 at Bathurst District Hospital to Marika and Stephen Goldie. Now, uh, as you know, the Major is a town planner and, and served in the Defence Forces. And uh, of course, my mother was a music teacher. So uh, yes, they, uh, I was born in Bathurst. And uh, as you can see right there, oh, that's upside down. That's my, uh, my christening there. And as I mentioned, that's the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Granville. And uh, that's uh, from my mother's side that uh, uh, I'm Ukrainian Orthodox. And uh, I try to go to the uh, services here, but I do prefer the services in Granville because one, I don't speak Ukrainian and I've got family members that can translate. And two, uh, I guess once you find a good church, you sort of... Uh, you grow a fondness to it. So while I may not be able to get there on a regular basis, if I go there once a year, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, so here we are at their first place that they lived in Bathurst. Oh, almost dropped from there. And this is a flat on William Street in Bathurst above where a supermarket was. And they rented there for a couple of years. And there's me and mum enjoying a, uh, oh, look at that tiger skin doing a cover. And it's us having a, uh, uh, check out her afro just quickly. That is an amazing afro. When I was living in Bathurst, um, some of the things I remember were the very, very cold winters. The Macquarie River is a, uh, a river that flows through the centre of Bathurst. And I may have mentioned in one of my earlier vlogs that it would uh, occasionally flood every, you know, 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 years. And uh, the time we were there, I think they had two or three minor floods and one large one. And the large one was right before the recession in the 1990s, early 1991. Uh, and yeah, we were cut off from the, uh, the main part of Bathurst for a long period of time. Uh, you couldn't leave the street for a couple of days. It was just water up, up the street, um, up, the, up to the cul-de-sac. So everyone in the cul-de-sac, we were sort of stuck there. But, uh, you know, uh, another thing back then, you couldn't get petrol on weekends. Pet service stations weren't open on weekends. Uh, so, yeah, you had lots to do indoors, played, got up to all sorts of mischief. Um, then I've got one here of me and my father. And you can see he's trying to hold me back from his train set there, which he still has. And he's actually collected more. <laughs> see, I think this is where I get my Peter Pan from because he's, he orders these train parts still today. Um, and he still collects them, but never, ever uses the train set. So uh, there he is telling me not to touch, but obviously I'm amazed. And that started a love of trains. Uh, trains are awesome. Shout out to my cousin Brendan, who's uh, an avid filmmaker and also loves trains. Now this one is a special one, I think, because it's in Blacktown where my father's grandparents uh, were living at the time. And there's me and mum. I'm quite young there. I don't know if you can, you can see me there, but there's mum and I. And that's when we were uh, visiting Sydney. So we'd often visit uh, school holidays or uh, Christmas holidays. We'd visit the family in Sydney and uh, the parents would give me time with the grandparents, of course. And I got to harass them. Uh, now next, oh, this is another great one. Actually, let's go to the Sydney one here. So this is in the backyard of my mum's grandparents' place. And this is uh, in Canley Vale. Uh, and it adjacent a big creek just down the back there. And they've got a huge garden. And uh, coming from Eastern Europe, there uh, after World War II especially, you can listen to that story on my, my YouTube channel. They, uh, if for today's crisis, they are perfectly prepared. They have all their vegetables that they grow. 
Uh, my grandfather never throws a nail out of a piece of wood. He'll keep it and put them in a tin of uh, a glass jar of other nails and screws all organised. He never... If, if the shops were to close today, they could be self-sufficient for another 10 years. They've got water tanks, they've got solar power, they've got gas. I think they had chickens up until recently. So uh, I, that's also where I learned how to uh, properly prepare a chicken. Uh, but um, yeah, everything that you could want, they had in that garden. And uh, of course, then being Eastern European, they preserve everything and just keep a, a six month supply just in case, because that's what they were raised in. And uh, my, my, my dad's side as well, um, my, my grandmother on my dad's side would often tell me stories about the rationing and how as a young girl, um, the parents would, I guess, not, they wouldn't be able to show what was happening because they were being bombed in London. And, uh, and so, you know, to the kids, they didn't really know anything different because the parents were playing it so calm and so relaxed, which I find absolutely astonishing because that we don't, they didn't have the communications we have today. Uh, so they would have been there, uh, given instructions by posters or whatever they heard on radio, and uh, just amazing. But uh, yes, uh, that was in Sydney as well. Now we're going to take a trip back to Bathurst here. Now that's where my father worked, and that's at Bathurst City Council. And uh, he worked there for about eight years, I think. And uh, that's me standing proudly waiting for him. I think I've got another good one of my father and I on money. And just across the road from the Bathurst Town Hall is the uh, Anzac Memorial and the Everlasting Flame. And there I am, uh, he's wearing his uh, ADF, uh, 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 I know they're not called medals, there's a special term for them, colour, I'm not sure, but uh, there I'm on my Boy Scouts outfit. And uh, yes, I was a, a cub, a Boy Scout, a Scout, whichever order it goes, and uh, that was great fun. Learned how to sew, cook, first aid, all the rest. Um, yeah, Boy, Boy Scouts were great. While I don't remember any of the knots, I do remember a lot of the other skills and they're, they're very handy. And I guess the fellowship as well, being with another group of, uh, well, one in a positive environment, but two with other uh, positive males is, is important because you want a good, a good uh, set of male role models around any young child. So that was, I was very lucky to have that. Um, uh, now here I think I'm at my, uh, once again, my dad's grandparents' place and it's Christmas time because it's uh, about to, there we go, um, I'm at my first Tupperware party uh, uh, and there we go, everyone is 83, 1983. So I'm at my first Tupperware party causing trouble. Uh, now I don't know where this one is but um, I'm playing somewhere and as you can see I'm mischievous, I'm a, I'm a Vegemite kid uh, t-shirt on. And uh, yeah, I've made a huge mess by the looks of it. And this is one that I tried to replicate a couple of years ago. It turned out horrible for an 18th, my 35th birthday. But uh, that's me at my first preschool. I think it was Chifley Preschool, named after uh, Prime Minister Chifley. And uh, yeah, there's my lovely artwork. Obviously, I still paint like that. Nothing's really changed. Terrible at painting. Uh, okay, next we've got... Uh, once again, me at preschool, looking very dapper. Oh, look at that young man. Obviously, I didn't choose what I wore because I would not have chosen that and I look amazing, but look at the uh, photo placement. I just realized I look like I've got two bunny ears, but still, look how adorable that young man is. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, so on Bathurst, uh, I went to Chifley Preschool and then I attended a primary school called Kelso Primary. And I was there from, uh, kindergarten through to year three, which was about 1990. And I think I've got Jillian still I have on my, uh, my friend list there. Um, I can't, I think this is James Thompson. I can't remember. Um, that's me, of course. Look at that smile. And uh, I can't remember the other guy up here. But yes, Jillian, I've still got on my face. Hello, Jillian. Good to see you. And uh, uh, I'm, I don't know where James is, but I'd love to know where James is. So, uh, guys, reach out to me, say hello if you can. Or is that? Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Um, and then we've got one, oh, a couple more. So this is coming up to Easter. Uh, one of the things, traditions that uh, the Orthodox uh, uh, Christian uh, faith sort of does is we, uh, much like the Catholics, will uh, a month before Easter, we should fast. And while... It's been abbreviated to sort of avoiding one thing for 30 days. It used to be uh, you'd avoid, 
I guess, chicken, meat, um, dairy products, you try and eat as minimal as possible. And uh, what would happen then, uh, prior to Easter, you'd have a, a large basket of food, which would then get blessed uh, by the priest. And then you'd have a huge feast to celebrate, uh, um, celebrate afterwards and, and breaking the fast. And I do remember a couple of years that uh, we did go without certain things. Uh, just because we were uh, with my maybe with my grandparents on a couple of occasions, and uh, they're very strict about it. But uh, other times, more relaxed. And today, you can sort of get away with just giving up one thing, which is which is sort of soft, and it gets away with. It. But still, I understand the uh, uh, premise behind it. it. Does make you appreciate what you have more. Um, it's also time when you're supposed to think about those less fortunate than you. There's a couple of other things you need to do. Certain prayers over the days, but. Uh, uh, there we all are blessing a, uh, all of our food at the uh, Ukrainian church in Granville there. Now, you'll notice I'm with all the women, and there's a reason for that. So, when you're uh, uh, in an Orthodox church, I don't know if they all do it, but uh, Granville, they'll, uh, they'll have it so that the, uh, the men are on the right and the women are on the... Yeah, something like that. And if you're a young child, of course, you'll go with the women, otherwise you'll cause trouble. Um, because the men, I don't think the men want to put up with you, but still, I'm not sure if they do it for sonic reasons or it's got some more traditional meaning, but uh, yeah, that's why I'm with all the women. Um, and I uh, don't know where mum is. And uh, actually, funny enough, um, another thing when you go into a uh, Orthodox church is uh, there's a number of, uh, I guess, um, practices that we, uh, we do where you uh, kiss... I guess, an image of Jesus uh, when you're getting uh, uh, your prayers and uh, when you're talking to the priest. Um, and there's a couple of other things which are, they probably now have to stop, unfortunately, because of this. Um, I know when they were giving the sacrament out, uh, you'd, uh, you'd kiss the bottom of the, uh, the, the cup, the, the glass that was carrying the uh, wine and the, uh, the bread in. Uh, but uh, there's another one of me looking very dapper out the front of church there in my Sailor Boy's outfit. I'm not sure who that is on the, uh, on the side of me there, but yes. So I lived in Bathurst until 1989-90 and uh, then moved to Sydney. But Bathurst was fantastic. I had another, a couple of other friends, Tom Liner, uh, who uh, then I ended up meeting up with in Shaw. It was uh, a beautiful country town in the sense you could you hear stories about being able to leave your door open, uh, your keys in your car, people wouldn't tell, everyone knew everyone. It was, a, I think it's still a beautiful country town from what I hear. I, I've been back a couple of times. I used to be able to ride everywhere to see who are, you could ride into town on your bike as a you know four or five uh, ride to your friend's house uh, very safe fantastic people uh, and of course it's most uh, uh, known for the uh, Bathurst 1000 which I've got a couple of more images if you go to my Facebook or Pinterest you'll be able to see these but uh, yeah there we go there's part one of three of uh, where I came from. So now you know that I was born in Bathurst, I'll tell you, if I already haven't given away, where I ended up moving to. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it was uh, Sarah, where's Sarah, where's the whole family? Let me get the family here. Where's Sarah and I? That way, where's Sarah? Oh no, where's my sister? Oh gosh, that's, okay. Sarah, sorry. Um, actually no, she probably wants her privacy, so that's good that you don't know what she looks like. Um, no, no, you guys know what my sister looked like. But uh, yeah, Sarah, uh, the major mum and I all moved to, uh, to Sydney in 1990, 91, 89, around that time. And uh, yeah, we'll pick up with that, I guess, when uh, in a couple of days or whenever the, the series drops, uh, the episode drops. So thank you all again for watching. That's uh, part one of three. Have a fantastic Sunday. Be sure to get lots of rest. Uh, Australia, you're doing a fantastic job. I'm... I'm Congratulations to all the amazing people working, I mean, not just in the emergency services and public services, but uh, the shop assistants, the, uh, oh, the civil servants that work for local councils, uh, state government, federal government, um, retail people that are still working, uh, people that are running cafes and small businesses. I mean, it's absolutely amazing what you guys are doing because uh, you're making our way of life continue uh, uh, you know, we, we were the lucky country to begin with, and we still are. And the fact that, uh, despite what your politics are, we've, uh, we're doing extremely well, I think. And um, uh, while the leadership, uh, I'm not, as I said, I'm not one for politics, everyone's got their thoughts. But uh, um, 
Obviously, he's done some good things, he's done some bad things, but to overall, Australia as a whole, we're doing a fantastic job. We all need to give ourselves a pat on the back. Keep up the amazing work, guys. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, for following me this week. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, leave them in the comments section. The uh, replay will be out uh, not long after. And uh, once again, have a great Sunday, Sunday everyone. Peace out.